Hello, my friend. Welcome to your sleep story. My name is Stephen Dalton, and it's my great privilege to be the voice that you listen to as you go to sleep tonight. Tonight's story continues the series that brings you to look at great works of art. And then we venture into the world when the art was created. We'll be looking at a beautiful painting tonight called Room in Brooklyn by Edward Hopper, painted in 1932. So expect to be in Brooklyn in the 1930s tonight as I take you on a calming, interesting adventure. As always, if this video helps you, please do hit the like button, even if it's in the morning when you wake up. As you probably know by now, I read all of your comments, so please make suggestions or just say hello. I love to hear from you. And finally, if you're not subscribed to the channel, please do if you use it regularly. Now, let's move on to the relaxation session before we begin tonight's adventure. So just notice the support beneath you. The room in which you're in. Whatever sounds might be around you besides my voice. The smells of the room. And now, with your eyes closed, in a position that feels right to fall asleep in, take a deep breath. Allow your surroundings to gently fade away. I'm going to count down now, from ten to one, and with each number, you'll fall deeper and deeper into a relaxed state. Ten, remember, you have nothing to do now. The day that has just been, has been, and whatever tomorrow will bring, it will bring. Nine. This moment is all you have. It's all any of us have. Allow yourself to luxuriate in this moment. The more you find yourself in the present, the more calm and peace you will live beside. Eight. Feel any tension in your body starting to release, melting away with ease. Seven. With every out breath, let go of the stresses and worries of the day. Six. 
with each passing number. Your mind becomes quieter. Five. Imagine any remaining unease flowing out of you, like water down a stream. Four. Feel the weight of your body sinking into your bed, fully supported and safe. Three. All you need to do is to listen, to trust, and to let go. You are doing just fine. You are safe. Two. Embrace the peace that is there for you. That peace that is always inside of you if you look for it. One. Let go completely. As I take you to Boston. You have come here to visit one of Boston's most celebrated institutions, the Museum of Fine Arts. The iconic granite facade of the museum stands tall and welcoming. It's a testament to the city's rich cultural history and the countless artistic treasures that are housed within its walls. The streets of Boston bustle with the lively sounds of the city. But as you approach the grand entrance of the museum, a serene quietness begins to envelop you, as if inviting you into another world altogether. Upon entering, you're greeted by the soft glow of natural light filtering through the skylights, casting a gentle illumination on the polished marble floors. The atmosphere inside here is calm, almost reverential. Hushed conversations of fellow visitors echo softly in the vastness. Punctuated by the footsteps of those wandering through the labyrinthine galleries, seeking solace in the world of art, seeking to see life reflected back at us. Maybe that's what art offers us. A feeling of belonging. A feeling that we are not alone 
in what we go through in life. As you meander through the hallways, you are surrounded by centuries of artistic brilliance. From ancient artifacts to contemporary masterpieces, each artwork tells a unique story, drawing you in with its beauty, emotion, and narrative. The museum seems like a gateway to different eras, cultures, and imaginations. You, however, are looking for a specific destination. You've heard whispers about a particular painting, Room in Brooklyn, by Edward Hopper. There's something about the way people describe it, that a certain allure piques your curiosity. Following the signs, you eventually find yourself in a room dedicated to American art from the early 20th century. And there, amidst the myriad of stunning works, it hangs Room in Brooklyn. At first glance, the painting exudes an air of stillness, almost solitude. A woman sits by a window, her back is to us, and she looks through the window. It looks like her gaze might be distant, like she's deep in thought, as the warm light of a setting sun bathes the room in a golden hue. The outside view reveals the iconic brownstones of Brooklyn, standing timeless against the passage of days. The painting seems to transport its viewer to another era another world, something quite removed from the world we inhabit today. And for a moment, you feel a peculiar sensation, as if you're on the cusp of stepping into that world yourself. And then, as you look closer, you begin to feel the atmosphere of that room in Brooklyn almost envelop you. Thank you. 
you begin to smell the aroma of the room. And suddenly, the world around you shifts subtly. The museum's walls and visitors fade away. Replaced by the warm ambience of a modest Brooklyn apartment. The steady hum of the city outside. The distant chatter of neighbors. The echoing footsteps on pavement. The occasional horn of a 1930s car fills your ears. The room's furniture feels tangible from the soft fabric of the armchair to the wooden floorboards underfoot. Sunlight filters through the sheer curtains, casting dappled patterns on the walls and furniture. There, seated at an easel, is none other than Edward Hopper himself, the great American artist who lived from 1882 to 1967. His focus is intense as he paints, his brushes moving with practiced ease. You are witnessing a genius at work. Every now and then, he pauses, stepping back to assess his work, adjusting his glasses, and taking a moment to consider the scene before him. The woman who had once been a two-dimensional figure in a painting, is now very much alive in the flesh. She sits still, lost in thought, gazing out at the world beyond the window. The soft rustling of her dress and the gentle rhythm of her breathing add to the room's sense of calm. In this suspended moment in time, you are but an unobtrusive observer, taking in the quiet passion of the artist, 
and the contemplative demeanor of his subject. The intimacy of the moment is palpable. Hopper's work has always captured snapshots of urban life, often evoking feelings of solitude and introspection, and witnessing the creation of one of his masterpieces perhaps feels like peeking behind the curtain of his creative process. Outside the window, Brooklyn of the 1930s stretches out, seemingly unchanged. The brown stones stand in neat rows, their brick facades reflecting the amber glow of the setting sun. Children can be heard playing on the sidewalks, their laughter echoing through the streets, while a nearby radio plays a soft jazz tune. The occasional tram rattles past its bell ringing as it stops to let off passengers. Shopkeepers are calling it a day, pulling down their shutters while chatting with regulars Women in elegant dresses pass by, laughing and conversing as they walk through this long since changed city. A vendor pushes his cart, selling roasted chestnuts. Their warm, earthy aroma filling the air. Further down the street, every so often, the clatter of horse-drawn carriages mingles with the newer mechanical sounds of motor cars. This is a period of transition where the old world and the new coexist side by side. In this corner of Brooklyn, life is both ordinary and extraordinary. The simple moments, the shared smiles, 
the fleeting glances. They all combine to paint a vibrant tapestry of a world long past. A simpler world And as the evening shadows grow longer, the room bathed in a softening glow, you feel a gentle pull to explore further, to dive deeper into this world and discover more of its secrets. You leave Edward and his muse behind and wander down the ornate staircase and on to the city streets Things are calm in this New York, and unlike its future self, this indeed seems like a city that likes to sleep. The cool evening air of 1932 Brooklyn brushes against your face. The sidewalks, though not bustling, are dotted with pedestrians that move at a leisurely pace. Men in crisp suits tip their hats to passing ladies who nod in acknowledgement. Their dresses swaying gently with each step. There's a grace and civility to their interactions, a sense of shared community that binds them together. As you stroll, the comforting glow of lamplights punctuates the gathering dusk. Each cast iron lamp post, ornate and beautifully made, guides your way through the Brooklyn streets. Very occasionally, the soft hum of a Model T engine can be heard, but the cars are few and far between, allowing for the melodies of evening chatter and the distant bark of a dog to take center stage. Small shops 
with wooden storefronts line the streets. Their windows showcasing goods of the time. The local bakery still open releases an inviting aroma of fresh bread. While a few doors down, the milliner displays a new collection of hats. A nearby newsstand vendor tips his cap at you, offering the evening's paper. Its headlines hinting at stories from around the world. This is another world. It smells different. It sounds different. The atmosphere is different. It is, in many ways, far removed from all you know. It is an escape, a sanctuary, a different world for you to visit whenever you want. There's a tranquil magic here, a stark contrast to the fast-paced New York of today. In this Brooklyn, moments are savored and connections are nurtured. As the city prepares to rest under the velvet canopy of stars, you feel wrapped in its embrace. You feel sleepy. Then in front of you sits a very luxury looking hotel. As you approach the grand facade of the hotel, the beauty of the 1930s architecture astounds you. The brickwork, bathed in the soft glow of the streetlights, is immaculately maintained and ornate ironwork balconies accent the large windows of the upper floors. Above the entrance, a neon sign reads, The Brooklyn Royale. Pushing through the polished brass doors, you're greeted by the soft, mellow sounds of a live jazz band playing in the background. The lobby exudes opulence, 
from the marble floors to the intricately designed chandeliers. Potted ferns line the walls and plush velvet couches invite visitors to sit and bask in the ambiance. Behind the mahogany reception desk, a friendly clerk in a sharp uniform greets you with a smile. Good evening. How may I assist you tonight? After exchanging a few pleasantries, you hand over some bills that you find in your pocket and secure a room for the night. The clerk hands you an ornate metal key. Its weight, cool and comforting, in your hand. Guided by a bellboy, you ascend in a beautiful old elevator with gilded doors. It moves upwards smoothly, and the soft hum accompanies your brief journey to your floor. Once you step out, plush carpeting cushions your every step down the corridor. Paintings of serene landscapes and portraits of elegant figures from bygone eras line the wall. Upon entering your room, you're greeted by a large, canopied bed, adorned with luxurious linens. The room carries the gentle scent of lavender. The window offers a picturesque view of Brooklyn's rooftops under the starlit sky. As you change into the night robe provided, a sense of profound peace settles over you. You slip into the soft bed, letting the comforts of the Brooklyn Royale cradle you as you drift in to a deep, restful sleep surrounded by the world of a time long past.